Hey everybody. So this week we're going to do something that we don't usually do. We're going to talk about the business end of things. If you want to be a full-time leather worker, how you actually go about getting the reliable business that pays enough to cover your shop expenses. Because while it's really fun to make big bags like this and, um, you know, the projects are fun, the reality is that there are a lot fewer customers for a big piece like this that's thousands of dollars than there are for something small like, say, the keychain. So we're going to focus on keychains in this video because these are generally something that a lot of different businesses and people will be interested in buying from you. And it's something that you can make for under $2 each and sell them for 4 bucks. You double your money. And with the speed that we're going to show you, the efficiency and the speed of the process we have that we use, you can be making about $100 an hour net profit, um, which is plenty for the times when you don't have jobs coming through. And it kind of spreads out so you can be in your workshop making something like this and kind of subsidizing some of your hourly wage to make a nice piece like this by making some of the smaller pieces like this. And you can make them for businesses. This is obviously for us ourselves. This is one we made for a friend's wedding. It's all the same stuff. You just get a different die or a different stamp and it's very easy to customize, very simple to make, um, and very high profit while still being a very low cost item for the, your end customer that is super high quality, solid brass, everything, uh, full wicket and Craig veg tan. We're not giving any, we're not skimping on the quality of the materials here. So let's get into it. We're moving, so please excuse the mess, but, um, so for this, you're going to need a four ton press, which this is the buckle guy one. We really like it. And then you're going to need button press. Also the buckle guy one. Um, this thing is killer, like 200 bucks plus the, um, the dies are like 30 or 40 bucks. So 250 press, I think that's about 1200. So 1450 dollars is your investment, but when you think about it, um, the first like two jobs pays you back in speed. So they pay themselves off fairly quickly and they are definitely pieces to have in your shop that will take your leather working to the next level pretty much in any way. So the way this method is gonna work, we have a custom clicker die here. This is basically a cookie cutter for leather. I have an 11 by 13 panel just because we want to use a square foot and um, most panels that are, if you if you want to buy a panel, which I would not suggest if you're doing this much volume, um, you would just buy you know a hide of leather that's 24, 25 square feet. But this is an 11 by 13 panel, so if you want to do this on a small uh, scale, you actually can still be profitable. Um, we'll probably get about 18 keychains out of this, just this piece of leather. The way the system works, though, is that first you're going to design the outline of the keychain that you want. Then you're going to use like a vector file, a vector program like Illustrator. Then you're going to make the stamp file. The stamp file is going to be the exact same outline. And then on the inside, you can basically do whatever you want. So for our stamp, it has our own logo in it. Um, for this one, obviously it had the details of the wedding. But what you do is you send the file with this outline to the client. They can fill in whatever they want on the inside. And then you have the die, you get a new stamp. This is a magnesium stamp. It's not steel, it's not brass. Magnesium is good for about 10,000 impressions before it starts to wear on the edges. Brass is good for 100,000, but magnesium is usually one-tenth or one-fifth the price. So if you're only doing two or three hundred, uh, of anything really. You can do this with coasters. It works the same way. It'd probably be roughly the same price too. Um, you're always going to want to go with magnesium if you're doing just small run batches. If someone says I need 50,000 then get a brass stamp and spend the money. But this was I think 30 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. And what it is, it's, it's a thin piece of magnesium that they CNC that design into and then it's just glued to a block of magnesium to make it easy for the press to work with our cutting boards. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to case this leather. We're going to dampen it. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to press out all of my stamps first. And so this is what you get once you've punched, uh, once you've stamped everything out. You just basically get a sheet of all over print stamps. Um, I did cut a piece here. So ideally, say you're doing this to scale, you're going to want to cut your hides in whatever size your press bed is. So you would want to cut, say, take this times two. Like, let's say this is four inches. You cut eight, in, eight and a half inches wide and then just super long strips. 
So you can just pull it down the press bed, press, move, press, move. Um, this being, we wanted to show you what you could do if you bought just a square foot from Buckle Guy or a panel from somewhere, what you could profit off of that. So we're doing the 11 by 13, which happened to work out really well. I think we got 21, we got three rows of seven. It worked very nicely. And so the next part is to use our cutting die to cut all this stuff out. So the cutting die, the cutting die's job is to, we have this ridge here that outlines the whole stamp. We're gonna put this cutting die, we'll slide right into that ridge. See? So now it's automatically centered and you can go real quick with it. So if you look from the top down there, see how you can't see any of the outline in that die? So what, or there's no outline in the middle there. So when we press it, it's gonna cut it out perfectly. We have our holes for our rivets. That's also in the die, it just adds more registration. Now here's the thing, right? They say you can have it two, you can pick two out of three. Uh, cheap, easy, what is it? Cheap fast and good quality. That's what it is, not cheap and easy. Cheap, fast, and good quality. You can pick two out of the three. This is an attempt at using efficiency and using processes to get all of those three, to get all of those three, right? So does it cost a little bit of money to have this tooling made? Yes, it does. You can't, if you were to cut the shape out by hand, each one would probably take you five minutes. Um, but Putting all of this in place, having, it doesn't have to be this shape, it can be any shape, but you can see how we made sure that they nest together so there isn't a lot of waste. Um, even though the shape on its own, the shape on its own looks like, oh, there's probably a bunch of waste here. Well, no, because this, when we flip it, everything nests together and you get a pretty good yield. Um, so this is what happens when we, you kind of take some time, not just to design the product, but to design the process by which you're going to make the product. And I think it's not, don't go out and be like, I have to sell keychains. Um, but take this experience that we've had and apply it to any product you want to make. How efficient can you make that process to lower your production time while also upping your quality by using these stamping tools? We're still using a hand, a hand press. We can still work when the power's out. Um, it still has that handmade feel because we're also using raw saddle tan leather or natural saddle tan leather. Um, but it allows us to reproduce these pieces very quickly, which allows us to, to stay competitive in the bulk market where you have big factories and stuff with hydraulic presses and multiple clicker dies. This will allow you to work with people that are local to you and maybe you cost an extra 50 cents. Honestly, if you sell these for four bucks a piece wholesale, even it costs your customers, there aren't gonna be many people that can beat you on price anywhere in the world if they're using these materials. We have solid brass and American made vegetable tan leather. You're really not gonna find much else. Your custom tooling is 35 bucks. So let's go, now that I've said my piece on that, um, I think that's just really important to point out because this is something that takes some planning, but the payoff at the end is that we have, I think 23 rows of seven, so 21 keychains here. It was, I pressed this out in about seven minutes and we're gonna punch them out in probably about five minutes. Um, you know, you're gonna be able to make a batch of 50 to 100 of these in one or two hours. And if you're doubling your money, um, that's 100 bucks an hour. And then that lets you, like I said earlier, that lets you then experiment with design and make the pieces that you might not be making a super high hourly rate on, but that you want to make because they keep you fulfilled. So here's our haul, and um, I think it is 21. So we're just gonna go through and make sure that we stamped everything out correctly, so like see, that's, we're a little off there. Sometimes it moves a little bit, so we'll, we'll get rid of that one. When you're doing anything that's has any bigger volume like this, you have to take into account 10-15% of the stuff you're going to punch out is probably not going to be right. You're probably not going to be that far, but um, just in case, um, you want to work that into your to your numbers. You might have to do something like this if you're moving fast and punch out a hole that didn't get fully punched out. But that's about it. Everything's ready to go. So because these are keychains, uh, this part needs to fold over. So while these are wet. This is only about five ounce leather, but just to keep the uh, integrity of our stamp here, I'm just gonna go in and fold these over to do a, like a little mini quick wet mold. And we'll let them dry for 10 minutes, and then we'll go in, rivet them together, and they'll be done. When it's time to go into assembly mode, we have our pop rivets here and our split rings here. Now we're using our signature split rings, which are custom made, but any good solid key ring split ring will do. Um, 
I wouldn't cheap out on the split rings. That, that is a place where you can save some money. So I'm going to quote, in our quote, we quote a dollar per split ring. You can go with a cheaper option. They, you can get split rings down to 19 cents, 15 cents. Um, but I like using the thick brass ones because it just makes everything feel so much more high quality because it is, it is high, it's higher quality. What you can do is you can offer your customer, if you're doing some, an order like this, you can say, well, we have a regular split ring option for 30 cents, or we have our premium split ring option for a dollar. And if, you know, see what they say. So all I'm doing here is I'm assembling them by taking one part of the rivet, putting it through a hole that's in our die, taking the other part of the rivet, the female part, and snapping the other. Now they're not ready to be, they're not done yet, we have to put them in the press, but by pre-assembling everything, we're doing one motion over and over and over again so we can kind of get in a rhythm. And then we'll go over to the button press and we'll press them all down and that's another motion that we can just repeat over and over and over again. And you'll find that if you're gonna get into this sort of leather work, um, basically high volume, higher volume, assembly line style stuff, you're gonna to wanna to break down the process of making the product you're making into steps that have specific movements that you can repeat. So, and I tested this, if I were to put this in then go over to the press and press it down, it would take me an extra 10 minutes to do 20 of these. That's how much longer it takes to do all those extra movements. Now that's not a lot for, uh, that was for a 50 piece order. That's not a lot, of, a lot for 50 pieces, but if you extrapolate that out, for 100 pieces, that would be an extra 20 minutes. Say you get an order for 500 key rings. You're at almost an extra hour of labor. So if you can cut that out by simply waiting to do that stuff till they're all done and ready to be brought over to the button press and done all at the same time in one movement, it's going to save you time, which is going to make you more money for your time. I want to talk about tooling selection when it comes to higher volume work, right? Because it, you have to deal with things like little minuscule movements taking up an extra few seconds over the course of hundreds of pieces like we were just talking about ends up taking more time. So you want to pick the best tooling you can that will make your job more efficient. This is a great example that you would never really think about, right? So this is a pretty standard die set to set double cap rivets. I think this is for a smaller size than we're using, but if you look, you put the rivet down on one side and then you pull this down and, well, it goes this way, and it sets the rivet together. That's how this die set works. That's how any die set really works. The problem is that with this die set, there's a rubber thing, there's a little rubber piece, which is great, and this kind of goes in and out, which is also great, but it, it's very easy. If you set your rivet down like this, it will set your rivet by pushing directly in the middle of the rivet and It'll, it'll be a throwaway because it'll dent the rivet. You won't be able to use it. It'll go all over the place. But this rivet setting die, however, is pretty, basically self-centering. So it's got sort of an angled side here, and I can slide that in and do anything I want. You can see it balances on its own, and then it centers itself and sets perfectly. So a tool like this, this is actually cheaper than those, and what it's going to allow you to do is move a little faster because you really don't have to be careful at all. I'm just kind of roughly sliding that in. And as long as I get close, it's setting those rivets. And you can see where that 10 minute size, that 10 minute time savings is. Because once I'm down to this task, I can just get moving and press one of these rivets every four or five seconds. So this is 20, I messed one up, um, but I think this whole video took us about an hour and a half to film. So between filming and everything else, 20 probably took about 25, 30 minutes to make. And the cost breakdown would be the leather is about $10 a square foot. Um, the rivets are about 17 cents each. The split rings we're using are about a dollar a piece if you were to just buy normal ones. So that, gosh, um, $10 divided by 20, that's 50 cents for the leather. 17 cents is 67 cents. So 
$1.67 per unit and we would sell them wholesale for four um, to either a shop who would sell them for eight, um, a leather, nice leather keychain for $8 is a very normal price, or if someone were to come to us and want something for their wedding, we would just keep it at four. Maybe go up to $4.50 if their dye was a little more intricate and cost more money. Um, or on the other side of that, if someone needed a thousand of them, we could batch them together and lower that price to three fifty dollars and still make a very decent amount of money um, hourly. And you have to remember that we're not making, we don't come in here and make $100 an hour for eight hours straight, right? So that once this is done, then you have to package them and you have to ship them and you have to email to get customers and all that stuff is not stuff you're making an hourly wage for. So in a craft like this, doing jobs like this, it's not my favorite thing to do. It's not Kalina's favorite thing to do, but it is, A, it's a nice break from super intricate work. You can put your headphones in and listen to a podcast or watch a movie, you know, have a movie going on the laptop or whatever and kind of zone out. And this is, it's more meditative when you have the right tools. Um, but it's also something that allows you, I think I said this earlier, it allows you to take on the more intricate projects that you might not have a customer base to charge full price for, still make those projects, still put those projects out to show that you can make them. But this sort of subsidizes the cost of that by being able to bang out quick orders like this to get the bills paid. So while it is, yes, you can easily make $100 an hour making keychains and promo material and stuff like this and coasters and all that stuff, um, that doesn't mean you're going to be making $100 an hour full-time starting a leather company or a leather business. Um, but I just wanted to make this video because with some of the tools, and the nice thing is, you know, of course we're sponsored by Buckle Guy, but the tools we're using, Buckle Guy's press is pretty much the cheapest in the game, and their, their rivet setting die, Kayleen was just had never set rivets with it because we, we just set up the machine. Um, how, how much easier? This is like... Crazy. She did a 900 piece order of these um, a few months back and I think the rivets took like three days, two days, something like that, because you had to line it up on the old machine. This one, it's it, it's going to save us hours and it's just the right tool. You got to pick the one that works for your application. There's nothing wrong with that other rivet setter, but if your application is setting 900 of these as fast as possible, you want to make sure you get the right one. Um, again, the clicker press, one of the cheaper ones in the game, works perfect. Um, it's still not attached, so that's why it was moving around. All I have to do is bolt it down, but we're moving. So that's going to be it for this one. Um, I hope you guys found some useful information. We don't usually do business-minded videos like this, but we'd like to do more of them, so let me know how you, what you think of it in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.